Tug, yo, why did Tugboat making a late push for most subbed um um or for most gifted subs for the uh, for the year? I might do some shit like maybe the last stream of the year. Whoever gifted the most, y'all craft the playlist. I'll just I'll just fuck with y'all and just listen to it. All right, cool. Let me see. All right, YouTube's coming online. Yo, people, uh, I went to, I went to uh, Mexico. Yes, yes, yes. I went to Mexico for a few days. Uh, my brother, oldest brother, got married. Yes. You know? Y'all know how I view marriage. But, you know, um, I was very ecstatic and happy that my brother got married. I was, you know. He seems happy. And that's really all what it is. You know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes I sit on here and I say whatever I think about whatever. Don't let whatever, even though I am big act, don't let what I say completely control your life. I'm not looking for people who want to be drones. And that's why I've always appreciated my audience. Because sometimes y'all give me pushback. Like, nah, I don't like that or I don't believe that or I disagree here. And that's how it's supposed to be. We're all human beings. We're not meant to follow everything. You know what I mean? You might agree with a lot, but you don't have to follow everything. Um, not that fond of marriage, but you know, about my, my brother did try to get married before. You know, what I mean, he tried to get married to a chick. I don't know. If I, I think I told you that story a bunch of times, but to the newer viewers, you know, he found this girl who was trying to get married to her. You know what I mean? She was like a nurse. You know what I mean? And she hit him, hit him with the finesse. She said, "Uh, yeah, you know, part of like finish up the nursing program, we got to do, do this res residency, but I could get placed better if I take the one that goes overseas." That's actually a fact. She went overseas to do some, like, whatever, whatever nursing thing, like, whatever. Anyway, she came back, and she said, you know what? She said, I got to go back again. Now, I never heard about, you got to run it back twice, but my brother knows what's going on. All right, go ahead. They were having a loving engagement. They were engaged for a few years. I knew my brother loved her. I remember one time walking into our old apartment, and this is before I bought my mama a house. So, you know, the only house before, you know, I, I I was the first to move. I was the youngest. And um, it used to be like five of us in a two-bedroom, you know, apartment. And eventually, my mom and my oldest brother, they became the only people living there, right? And I remember walking in one time, you know, it was like, I forgot where I was living. I, walk, I walked in. And my brother, who is usually kind of like a little macho, a little tough, not like saying tough, like tough guy, but... He just ain't the guy to do this. I walk in and I swear it was SpongeBob playing. I swear it was like a scene where you're hearing, what's that nigga? What's that? What's that nigga that played a clarinet? Nigga, I heard a clarinet fucking net. I swear I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. I'm following the sounds because I'm like, this got to be a new episode of SpongeBob. It's leading to the room where my brother was staying in. Kind of opened the door. My nigga's in sync with his fiance playing the fucking clarinet. Couldn't believe it. I said, damn, this is what love does. Love changes a motherfucker. Squidward, that's that nigga's name. Somebody said, how is that weird? It's not weird. But I only comment and I say that because what love does to you when you really fuck with someone, sometimes you do things that is even out of your comfort zone. You get what I mean? You, 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 you start acting out of character. And I said, oh, shit. Okay, this is real. So anyway, she came back from that first stint when she went overseas. Told me, you know, she had to, yeah, like she could get her nursing degree or like she gets higher pay when she gets back in the pick of her hospital if she go do like six months or whatever the case. I forgot how long it was. But then she comes back and she says she got to go back again. Now, you know, there's a little couple changes that he noticed while she was back. But when she went back the second time and came back, my nigga. You know how they say they about to like burn people at the stake in Iran if you could see their eyebrows, my nigga? She came back looking like, hold on. I'm about to show you. I swear. I'm going to show you. Nigga. I couldn't make this shit up. Bang. And, and I'm not making fun of nobody's culture. I'm just telling you a personal story that really went out. This is just, just life. You feel me? Let me see. You know what I mean? It's just real shit that happened. Everybody who's been here for a while, they probably heard this story a bunch of times. But that's for my newcomers. For my newcomers. You feel me? 
Never heard this one. You gotta. Okay. Bruh. She came back looking like this, bruh. I swear. Now, granted, now you might be like, what's the problem with that? There's no problem with that. Except the woman that he got engaged to was a young, vibrant woman who was on the path to being a, 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 a nurse. I remember she was like, you know, before she went overseas, she was even a little bit like immature, like all young women are. You know what I mean? She was all about partying. She was wearing skimpy outfits. You know what I mean? You know, you know, in Jamaica, we call them pum pum shorts. Like over here, you know, them shorts that basically show half the booty hanging down. Yeah, all of that. Belly button out, belly button ring, everything like that. She, that's how she was going to the club. Now, keep it real, it's a red flag because my brother's not really a club nigga, but she would go with her friends to the club. That's how she was rocking. But he accepted her for that, and he was rocking with her. You know what I mean? My, my brother's Jamaican. If they tell you anything about Jamaican dudes, man, Jamaican niggas, if one thing they're going to do with a girl, they're going to fuck on you consistently. A Jamaican nigga going to fuck you three, four times. They might even fuck you eight times a day, okay? So somehow my brother and her found some synergy. He proposed to her, okay? Bought her expensive ring and everything. She goes overseas. She comes back. She says she's... She, some of the stuff she used to do before, she don't really want to do again. She's not that drastic the first time. And she says, yo, I got to go back again. He's not looking too much into it. She's going for school. Go ahead, Shorty. Shorty goes overseas. She comes back like this. Kid you not, I remember walking. Like, I think I stayed a night at my mom's house. At an apartment at the time. When I stayed at night at my mom's house. And I walked out and she was in the living room. And I said, bumbo cloud. I want the, I want the, I want the puss. Yo, I was in straight disbelief. Um, I'm very tolerant, though. But I didn't know who this person was. It looked like a stranger. I can't see nothing but eyebrows. I'm sorry I'm not an eyebrow detector. Anyway, I get to realize, I'm like, oh, that's my brother's fiance. Now, he don't like people in his business. And he ain't really never told us exactly what happened till in the aftermath. But I'm going to skip to the end of the story because we got a lot more shit to get into today. What ended up happening is that, you know what I mean, um... She's basically told him that she converted to be a Muslim and her time overseas was very important and integral in that. And that she was now a Muslim. Now, my brother was saying, yo, I don't know how this is going to work. He grew up in a Christian church. So did I. So did my whole family. And it's not that he has a problem with anybody who's a Muslim. But if you are now a such devout Muslim where like she basically told him the only way they could continue this engagement is, is that he has to convert. So it can't be she's Muslim. He's Christian, he has to convert. That's already a red flag. Anyway, she continues to 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 make other stipulations. First of all, you know you're very proud about being with this woman. You know she's we go out, dress up this and third. Now when he went out with her, she's dressed like this. You get what I mean? Always dressed like this. Now you know he was about to tolerate it until obviously, and again, this is why I told you the thing about Jamaican men. My brother ready to get some pussy. It's been, it's been like six months, shorty. <laughs> You've been sitting on that good pussy for six old months, man. I'm about to blast that shit up. <laughs> she said, wait, 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 wait. Actually, I can't fuck you no more. <laughs> My brother came to his senses, man. All that clarinet playing went out the fucking window. Come on, man. Like, I put a fucking ring on your finger for marriage. We was fucking prior to this. You went overseas, found some religion, and now we can't fuck. It's over. Got rid of her. Now, the story gets a little bit more interesting. I'll tell you why. Someone later sees her. And by the way, uh, me and my second, my middle brother used to be getting at my oldest brother like, bro, if you're breaking up with her, you didn't do anything wrong. She completely switched religion. She switched who she was as a person on you. You gave her a ring. Get your ring back. He never got the ring back. We always told him you should have got it back. Anyway, um, he just got her out of, his, uh, out of his life. You know, he was super hurt. He pretty much gave up on marriage at that point because, like, he was actually, and by the way, he used to be a hoe, too, like, you know, like many men. But for this one woman, he decided that he was going to settle down. Now, the thing with that is that, you know, you're, you're putting a lot of chips or putting a lot of eggs in one basket, and after that happened, he just said, man, fuck marriage, right? So that's what I'm, I'm telling you. To his current marriage, I'm happy for him because I ain't think this nigga was going to find marriage again. Let me finish the story. So, broke up with her. He's so hurt, he said he leaves her with the ring. You know what I mean? Um, she goes back overseas again, which maybe is for school again. She comes back like about a year or two later. But somebody did tell him something that was odd. 
Yo, I think I seen, someone told my brother this, I think I seen your fiance, or I don't know if you still your fiance, she was on a Muslim news program getting married to a guy. My brother's like, what? What are you talking about? Let's fast forward story. About a year and a half later, right? So he heard this about like six to eight months after. Then a year and a half later, it's so about two years afterwards. She's back in the States and she's at the mall and he randomly sees her, but he has such he, like, you know, you hate a chick now. He's hating this chick now. She tries to talk to him. He doesn't really talk to her. She calls him. He blocks her. She tries to call him a bunch of times, blocks her. Somehow, like in the next couple of days, she found like someone else's phone to call him. And before he could even get off the phone, she starts a bunch of pleading. Here's the truth. What happened with this chick? The chick went overseas for school and met a nigga who she fell in love with. The nigga was a Muslim. The nigga told her, you have to convert. You have to become a Muslim. My brother don't know none of this. He's waiting on his good old, his good old party loving, pretty, pretty fiance. She goes, so she converts. After the first time she comes back, she she she's not that like, you know, she, she's trying to still adjust to American customs. The dude over there basically says, no, we rock how we rock no matter where we are in the world. So that's why the second time she's wearing this whole shit in New Jersey, my nigga. It's nigga, it's summer, nigga. N nigga, it is nigga, it's hot in a wife beater. She's in this shit. Chill it. Okay. Guess more interested. But my brother saw her in the mall. No, actually, somebody else saw her, too. They said, yo, we saw her. She was with kids. This didn't make sense, but it made sense later. The kids look like they about, like, one or two. You want to hear what happened? Shorty went over there. The nigga brainwashed her. She converted to Muslim, put two in her gut. When she came back initially, she was already pregnant for the guy. Never told my brother. So she pregnant for another nigga. She's just acting weird. My brother don't really know, but he's tr still trying to figure it out. She pregnant for the whole other nigga. By the way, she later admits this too because she called him. She was like, oh, I'm sorry, Ruma. Because you know what happens in Muslim culture? <laughs> well, I won't say, let me not speak ignorantly because it's not all Muslim culture, but whatever culture she was in, but but they claim that the the the, the is Islam was the religion that was kind of governing it. I'm, I'm a little ignorant, so I don't want to disrespect anyone who's Muslim or anyone who believes in Islam at all. I'm just giving a, a, a retelling the story. A lot of them dudes ain't into the, monog the monogamy stuff, okay? So essentially, he pumped two in her gut. <laughs> she thought, you know, I mean, he had some like, you know, I guess they celebrate everybody having a kid or is going to be. She was one of the harem. She was like. Young Miami for Diddy. You know what I mean? So she got tight because she thought, like, she realized, you know, women at one point realized, like, damn, I was with a guy that was willing to give me his all, and I was going to be the only woman. I come over here, and I'm about to be one of five. Sorry, that's how it goes. So anyway, she comes back over here. She tries to call my brother the set third. Um, but now she got two kids. She admits it. She said, yeah, when I came back, I was pregnant. Um, I was fucking with this guy. I'm so sorry. I, I really hurt you. I betrayed your trust. Like, I don't know how I could make it up to you, but I really did love you. Blah, 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 blah. Please can you give me another chance. My brother was cold as hell. Like, he, like he blocked her. And then I think he even tried to even get a restraining order on her because she tried to keep contacting him. And I'm like, damn, my brother will never get married. Like, after this type of shit, I'm done. <laughs> Fuck you, hoes. But, you know, uh, fortunately for him, he found a woman that, you know, he believes he, he tried marriage again with. And that's why I was in Mexico. Okay, you know what I mean? After some some Jezebel like this, some scally where I do some shit like that, I'm good. But um, yeah, so that's why I was in Mexico. Um, I actually went to just you know what I mean support this and third. I landed. My brother was like, "Yo, hey." Apparently, you know, which which uh, um, I I I'll give you the whole story, but um, it was a destination wedding. The fucking DJ at the wedding cost like four thousand dollars 
My brother opted to not do it. My brother was calling me like a day before I left. I didn't even answer because I was busy doing shit. I land. My brother's like, yo, ah, could you DJ? And I'm like, fuck. I brought my laptop for work purposes, but shit, I said, fuck it. I'm going to try. Um, I ended up DJing the whole thing, MCing the whole thing. Shit actually went great. You know what I mean? Um, which saved him $4,000. But then, you know, the, uh, still, the weddings be expensive. I gave my brother a really good gift, I believe. Um, the wedding, I I'll say it came to near like $30,000. Um, it's a destination wedding. Usually weddings here cost like a hundred thousand. I go a lot. So that that's cheap. That's cheaper. Um, I, 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 as I gave the last speech at the wedding and I, and I told my brother, I'll pay for the whole thing. So I'm paying for, I'm paying for my brother's wedding. He seems happy. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of weddings, you know what I mean? I'm definitely the biggest fan of seeing my family happy. So. You found a woman, and this Jezebel, she's going to be a single mom forever. So, yeah, DJ the thing, about to pay for the joint for him. He's still actually in Mexico. Like, he, he went to a honeymoon. He's on his honeymoon now. So, uh, you know, hey, you know, it's my oldest brother, man. That, that's just how it is. If you, if you, could, if you could give back, you got to give back. All right, anyway, that, that's enough for me. That's enough for me. That's enough for me. And by the way, his birthday was yesterday too. So his birth so so really I'm like, your birthday present and your wedding gift is me paying for this wedding, brother. Like, you good. You good. But, you know, my bro my brother's a hardworking person and, and trust me, thirty thousand dollars is a lot of money. It's a lot of money to people who have to grind. You know, my brother's a, he, that brother is the is the only one that doesn't have a college education because he came over here mad late. You know what I mean? He came over the latest. Um, when me and my, my middle brother came over here, we went into like middle school. So like we went middle school, high school and college. He never went to college. He just went straight to work. He didn't have papers. He was just kind of hustling around. You know what I mean? And he kind of made it. So, you know, I, I'm happy to help out. And also the, the, like you, nobody loves a wedding more than a mom. My mom was just cheesing the whole time. So. Yeah. All right. Anyway, you know, for that, you know, for that, like real life shit, I like to update you with, with everything going on. By the way, if you wonder what the fuck I do other than spend money on and Henny and this and third, I try to give my, my, my family, you know, some gifts and um, try to make sure that their life could be easier. So thank you guys. Thank you guys to the gifters, the viewers. Absolutely. The audience, you guys have afforded me with with the luxury of being able to bless them like that now. Since we're gonna talk about some debauchery now, we, we might as well get into it. Holy, this was the most hilarious shit I seen, man. There's a few things that happened while I was on, I was in Mexico because the whole time I'm kind of in Mexico, but really I'm also on my phone, which I don't know if that's sad, but it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> yo, I was having fun with this shit, man. I kid you not. Now I don't know if anybody's seen this. And by the way, YouTube, y'all online? Oh, YouTube online? Got a little five thousand people in there. Yo, I'm going to get to, there's a bunch of shit that I really miss. We got to get to. Kanye and Clubhouse, Kanye and Meek, hilarious. But this shit right here, nigga, this shit right here, nigga, yo, it's so hilarious just watching all of these chicks. Like, everybody who's been preaching the city girl this, city girl that, a city girl these days is just a low esteem, a, a, a low self esteem chick, bro. You get me? A city girl is just a placeholder on a roster. Let's keep it a beat. You feel me? Um, I love to see what's going on in society now. All of that city girl, hot girl, icy girl stuff has come to an end, and it's all took the same thing that people have preached for decades, man. You know what I mean? A woman start making a little bit of money, she thinks she a boss, she a boss, she a boss, whatever, whatever, until she meet a nigga who got a bigger back. And Diddy is a chick to really end all that shit. So Diddy has, um, if you don't know, so um, Young Miami is like Diddy's side chick, like one of them, like a bunch. He like he got like about like eight, nine. You know what I mean? Um, she's like one of the. Okay, maybe I shouldn't call her a side chick because you know everybody would be like, yo, how could she be a side if she'd have made? She's one. She she's a she's on the roster. <laughs> Yo, women, yo, women try to get technical all the time. No, I can't be, a, I, I can't be a side chick. You know, no, we're all single. Like, you, you know, they try to, they, they, you know, they try to like word semantic you to death. I'm not a side chick. He's single. I'm single. We're the, we're, we're friend. Bruh, you're a side chick, bro. Like, I don't give a fuck what you talking about. Like, <laughs> yo, you're a side chick, bro. Like, stop playing, bro. 
Like, yo, everybody, they try to word something. No, 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 no you're a, bruh. If you on my roster, you're a side chick. Even if I don't got a main girl. <laughs> Us, listen. The difference between, and to keep it real, a roster, it might even sound better to be on a roster than, than being a side chick. Because the side chick just say you're second best. A roster, we don't know where you fall in the lineage. <laughs> so anyway, all these chicks are coping. Then he's smashing like 10 chicks, bro. 10 chicks viciously. Diddy's really on some Nick Cannon shit. You should have knew once that nigga changed his name to Brother Love. He's trying to change hoeing around. He's like, nah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spreading love. I'm just spreading love. No, nigga, you spreading semen. That nigga's spreading that community dick. <laughs> nigga. These chicks pH balance got it. Yo, they, yo, they shit, they shit got to be right now frazzled. But it's all good because Diddy's just showing us that all these women that was acting like they're plain men, we don't hear about no roster they got. We only hear about Diddy roster. Anyway, um, he announced, he says, yo, I'm so blessed to welcome my baby girl, love Sean Combs to the world. Mama Combs, Quincy, Justin, Christian, Chance, Delilah, J Jesse, and myself all love you so much. God is the greatest. Then they didn't mention one side chick. Salute to Diddy, man. Diddy, the first nigga to ever have a side baby on his side bitches. I've never seen this before. This is great. Yo, all the side chicks arguing about, yo, 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 no, he was talking about me on that caption. No, no, he got me a car. No, 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 no. I was at the award show. No, I was rubbing his feet. I was sucking them bunions. No. <laughs> Y'all are all glorified babysitters, man. That's what y'all need to do. The next Carisha anthem going to be about changing diapers. Stop fucking capping. In true act fashion. Because I know everybody's saying, who's the baby moms? I found her. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, well, I ain't gonna say I rock with this chick because this is what the rumor is. She one of like, she was just one of them scallywags that was just catching the like, the henny dick. You heard me? Like, did he lit piping around? I heard he put on a rubber, which I ain't gonna lie, most of these niggas don't use condoms, but okay, we'll believe it. And they said Shorty poked a hole in the condom, which I don't believe that one for for one bit. You know why? Bro, Diddy is a 55-year-old player with a harem of 30 chicks. You think he's getting a condom from a girl? How the fuck she going to poke a fucking a hole in the condom? Nigga, does her pussy got thorns? Nigga, how? Nigga, you think, yo, Diddy got sued by one of the, one of his assistants who used to say that Diddy would just would just want to get massage massage with his dick hard. Like, but Diddy got assistants for everything. You think Diddy's gonna get to the point where he's about to fuck a smut and literally say, "Hey, do you have a condom?" I'm just trying to say it just don't make sense, people. It just don't make sense. Like, come on, we just gotta be honest. Did he not get no condom? Yo, how could a girl poke a hole in a condom if if y'all use a condom, you're providing it? Anyway. I found the chick chat. Took me a while. Because I was looking. I thought it was Karisha's baby. I thought it was a surrogate. You know, I realized, <laughs> and by the way, I think it's a mutual thing. Carisha got, she got like a little Maybach and she got a show. But other than that, you know what I mean? We all know, like, come on, it's one of those. Let me not even say it. It's one of those. You know what I mean? 
Like, how old is Carisha? Like, she still got some good years in front of her. Diddy just trying to come on. You know what it is. You know what I mean? Anyway, this is supposedly his baby mama right here. Salute to my boy Diddy, man. Diddy, my God, so I'm saluting him. Diddy, a true king. Let's see if I can find this chick. Damn, all these chicks look alike on this fucking page. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All these chicks look alike. Fuck. Let me see. I gotta look at this. No, no, I'm about to find it. Don't you worry, chat. Oh, here we go. I got it. Give me one second. Oh, you can't see it? No, no, yeah, no, I, I'm looking at it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Oh, they deleted it. Fuck, they deleted it while I was on it. It's definitely hurting then, I guess. They deleting the shit. Okay. All right. Okay, this is a shorty right here. Salute to my boy Diddy, man. Oh, here we go. This is shorty right here. I don't, oh, they don't show her face here. This is her. My boy Diddy, man. Diddy, you devious, boy. You know what Diddy about to tell his Harry massage chicks? Don't y'all don't be subtweeting my new baby mama now. Y'all are side chicks. This my baby moms. Let me get a better picture for y'all chat. Y'all deserve better. I got y'all. Say less. Uh, right here. Bang. Got you. Shorty right here. That's the new baby moms, man. My boy Diddy winning, man. It also caught her right here. Wait, no. Mm, nah, I can't. What's the link? Oh, no. This is where it's at right here. She had an Instagram. She deleted it, though. Okay. Apparently, this is her in this video, too, bro. I don't know, nigga. So, Shorty, right here, you know what I mean? Come on, man. Somebody said, You the prize, big act. <laughs> nigga, Diddy's the prize. This shit was hilarious. Anyway, this really some shade room shit, but like I just love laughing at it because all these chicks, yo, you know I love this whole Diddy thing because Diddy subliminally is letting all these chicks who've been following and being hypnotized by these other women they're following, like they've been listening to Carisha talking about fuck these niggas, use them for a bag, you to this, this, that, and third. Diddy's basically saying, when well, you rich enough, yeah, I'll throw you a little bag, but I'm just like, I'm playing you out. I'm not claiming you. I got you thirsty. You march the beat of my drum. I'm having kids over there. I'm fucking everybody. You pick your win. I think Diddy got the best win. I think Diddy got the best win. But anyway, you know what I mean? You got to have a little baby by your little masseuse. Come on, man. Hey, Carisha better learn this fucking technique right here. This is what got Diddy to get the kid. Carisha, Carisha, please learn this technique, shorty. Carisha, please learn this fucking technique. That's what we got to get to it. Slow my nigga, Diddy, man. Fuck with my boy. All right, anyway. Dog. Shit get out of control. 